In this third part of the rocks painting tutorial, we are going to finish the blocking and move on to refining our composition. At that stage, when my lighting is ready, I use the color curves to bring a bit of contrast in my rocks. I want to increase both the value and the color contrast. Although this is a compositing technique, I wanted to show it because it is still part of the blocking here. Um, I want to show you that the process is organic. You have the right to use every tool you want as long as you don't get caught up working on the details. So while the recording is going on, uh, let me give you a few more notes. The rocks are round, so the transition from light to dark is soft overall. It's not the same thing if you have very hard edges on your rocks, so be sure to pay attention to the reference. Also, it is not necessary to add a lot of color variation at that stage. You can instead conveniently layer it in later on new layers, which will give you more flexibility with your work. It is for the exact same reason that I drew the rocks without moss. I'm going to add them in just a moment on new layers for maximum flexibility. There are a few reasons for that. The first one is that you can reuse a part of your composition elsewhere. You know, like I can reuse the moss I'm going to paint onto another rock in the background, for instance. But you can also extract parts of the image to create new sprites. For instance, here, the rocks are on their own separate layers. If I want to make something more rectangular and a brighter gray rock for another environment in the game, I can take one of these and erase parts of the silhouette and use a filter layer in Krita to make it look brighter. A last note on the composition, I am not trying to completely copy the rocks from the reference. You know, I've told you to analyze reference, to stay true to it, and that's important, but you can still bring in some characteristics from other types of rocks, which is what I'm doing here. That way it is a bit more cartoony, a bit more rounded, and it would fit the style of my games better. There is one technique I want to talk about, which I'm using in here and pretty often. It's combining gradients with selections. Using gradients is a great way to block shadows on skins, on any surface that's soft, and on particular, to block in areas of contact. Here, I'm using it to refine the shadows along the borders of my rocks. I pick a dark color, then I select the gradient tool, ensure that the lock alpha option is still checked, and I just draw a gradient real fast wherever I need some shadows. I'm also taking advantage of the blending modes to assist me in my tasks to go as fast as possible. I'm using the shortcut, which is Shift-Alt-O to switch to the overlay mode. And in general, with the blending modes, uh, the keyboard shortcuts work that way. You keep Shift and Alt down and you press the first letter of your blending mode. So Shift-Alt-O for overlay, Shift-Alt-N for normal and Shift-Alt-M for multiply. It is time to layer in the moss. Organic elements like that can be a pain to paint. The first time I'm making a certain element of nature that's very organic, I design it manually with simple tools. This is a good way for me to think about ways to automate the process later on. For instance, here, the moss is really erratic. A scatter brush or a spray brush would help to draw the silhouette faster. But as this is the first time I'm trying to draw that yellow lichen, I am taking the time to do it traditionally, and at the same time I'm observing the reference all the time. I'm trying to analyze the volume and the spread of the moss. Here I'm stylizing it quite a lot. I'm trying to make it almost gold and layer in oranges and reds to make it very vibrant. I'm also adding cracks. Uh, this makes the rock look more interesting and it gives the moss a direction, a flow to grow along. This is fine as this is a study and a rock composition. In the in-game sprites, I may erase some of it. Okay, so now we have the silhouette. Because the moss is on its own layer, the basic shading is going to be much, much easier. I just lock the alpha, pick a big soft brush and start painting, that's it. The moss sits on the rock, it is part of it in a sense, so its shading is the same as the rocks. So you have to make the lighting consistent between the rock layer and the moss that's on top of it. That's why I'm 
uh, using big strokes to add shadows, you know, on the lower part of the moss itself. I am not trying to add a small areas of shadows along its edges as if it was just a flat sheet on a 2D plane. No, it's in volume, it's round in space, it's enveloping the rocks, so I'm trying to take that in account. Here's a pretty efficient technique for you. I'm using the layer styles at some point. I'm using the drop shadow to create a contact shadow between the moss and the rock, and I'm using the inner shadow to add volume to the bottom edge of the moss very fast. It's a very good technique when you have little time in the midst of production, so I recommend that you get used to doing things like that as a game artist. I am not necessarily giving you the best example of the workflow as I am not blocking the moss everywhere before refining any part of it. But I'm doing that because I'm going to use a dirty copy-paste trick to work faster. That is to say, I'm going to take the moss that I've done and I'm going to paste it onto another rock and conform it with the transform tools. That way I will have a base sheet of lichen to work with that I can just paint over and conform to the new rock. But going back in time a tiny bit, I do copy uh, the rock and the moss layer uh, when I'm satisfied with both and merge them together. If you recall correctly, I told you that the moss and the rock have to be considered as a single entity. Well, here I am going to blend them with one another. That is why I merge them together. I'm painting over both layers at the same time, in a sense, in order to merge them into one another. That said, the refining process is pretty repetitive. It is the same for every one of the smaller rocks. I always think back to my initial lighting and just copy and transform the moss to conform it to the new rock sprites. That's it. As far as the white stains are concerned, I added them at the very end of the process, after the polishing phase. These are very simple, there are but white blobs added in various areas of the composition. I am spacing them out on purpose to make the distribution look a bit random and natural, but I am still placing them on top of the yellow moss just like I can observe on the reference. And I do smooth them a little bit using a color smudge brush with a bit of yellow in it. This is the same idea as before, it is just to make the lichen part of the whole composition to make my entire rock formation into a single sprite. There is one last important step I want to share with you, softening the edges. In Krita, with the alpha lock on, although we can only paint inside of the shape, we can still erase it. In other words, with a brush in eraser mode, we can refine our silhouette. When I feel confident with my sprites, I go back around the silhouette and try to soften it a little bit. Be sure to not use a color smudge preset for that, as it will add some color even in erase mode. Ideally, you want to use a brush with a little bit of transparency. And you want to work on the very edge of your sprite. That's it for this three-part rock painting tutorial series. The idea was to both run you through the painting process of an environment game asset and to show you how I approach painting and analyzing new subjects, in that case, rocks. If you want to go further and to become a better game artist with Krita, there is the Game Art Quest Kickstarter. It is still running, it is funded right now, and it's waiting for you. So please go check it out, back it, and spread the word. This project supports the GD Quest channel, the Krita Foundation, and will teach you a ton of techniques at the same time. That said, I want to thank you all for watching. Be creative, have fun, until next time.